Hey guys, we're back with a brand new series. Today we're gonna to be talking about object-oriented programming. There's a lot to talk about. This concept is thrown around all the time and people don't take advantage of actually learning OOP, which stands for object-oriented programming. Now, JavaScript, the language itself, is a very weird language. There are a lot of different programming paradigms that are supported and OOP is just one of them. So a lot of JavaScript developers don't really know what to kind of focus on because when you first write some JavaScript code, probably the first lines of code that you've probably written is a simple console log, and that's really it. We're going to go ahead and just focus on object-oriented programming. We're going to talk about why it's important, why it's used. We're going to talk about the whole concept of it, and I'm going to show you guys how to actually use it in practice. Okay, so the short answer to this main question is yes, you're going to be dealing with OOP concepts literally everywhere. Okay. And a lot of developers, especially developers who come from a strong background of OOP, they're probably going to write some kind of API that other people are going to use that is OOP based. Okay. So it makes sense that if you want to use their library, if you want to use their API, their framework, you need to be able to understand what object oriented programming is, because if you don't, you're going to have such a hard time on understanding the terminology that they're throwing at you. I'm sure you've probably heard about things such as abstract classes, classes, methods, fields, constructors, all of these things. And you've probably not even bothered to Google or maybe you did, but they gave you some kind of very abstract, very crazy answer that just kind of like made you feel overwhelmed. Okay, and the whole point of this video is to walk through every single one of these terms, explain what they are, and so that you have a better understanding of what it actually means. Okay, so yes, it is very important to understand OOP. Okay, now this doesn't mean that you're always going to be stuck writing object oriented based code. This just means that it's going to enable you to follow a new pattern to follow a new paradigm of programming, it gives you more opportunities to solve certain problems by taking a different approach and it also enables you to have a better understanding of object oriented concepts so that when again like i said if you were to use someone else's code you would understand their documentation you would understand what their code is doing because you understand object oriented programming i'm not saying that you'll understand the entire code base i'm just saying that you'll have a better understanding of what the concepts are and what they mean all right so we're going to be talking a lot in this whole course and my main goal is to cover as much as i can as well as making sure that you guys have a lot of information just walking out of this video you're going to have much more confidence in terms of object oriented programming understanding what objects classes aggregation and composition inheritance abstraction encapsulation polymorphism you're going to be having a better understanding of all of these topics okay these are primarily the main topics that are focused on in object oriented programming there are other concepts but we're not going to focus on them because javascript itself doesn't have those concepts and we would need another language like java or typescript to really fully take advantage of object oriented programming okay but these are the main concepts that we're going to be focusing on so assuming that you guys already have a basis of programming and you just want to learn what object oriented programming is and sit back and relax and let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so before we even get started on just talking about the topics that I mentioned in the table of contents, let's actually start talking about what really object-oriented programming is. Okay, so now the main idea of OOP is to conceptually take the idea of real life objects and transform them into code. So for example, you're probably watching this on a computer, a mobile phone, a tablet, or even a smart fridge. We can think of all of these things as objects in real life, and we can represent these objects in code. So, for example, I can represent a computer, which is, you know, a real life object as an object in code in JavaScript. Okay, same thing with a mobile phone, a tablet, or even a smart fridge. So before we even move forward, I want you guys to start thinking about, you know, all the objects that you see like around you. For example, if you look to your right, you probably, you know, can see your bed or your desk or a lamp or just something, maybe even clothes, just anything, right? Think about how you would represent that object in code. You would say to yourself, hey, well, you know, what can I actually think about that object that can translate into code? And that's what we're going to be talking about.
Okay, so objects in code, likewise in real life, they share something in common. They have properties. For example, if you're dealing with a user object, they have a name, an email address, an age, the date that they joined, whether or not they're verified, a whole bunch of properties. Likewise, in real life, if we look at a desk, a desk has certain properties. A desk has a color, has a height, it has a width, a depth, it has a weight. It has so many different things. Is that desk a sit and stand? right? There are so many different properties that we can think about in terms of our real life objects as well as objects in programming, okay? And they're pretty much like characteristics in a sense. So like I said before, we can think of our computer object it has many different characteristics such as a color, a weight, a height, width, depth, number of USB ports, etc. So let's actually take a look at how this looks like in code. Okay, so we have a simple computer.js file. You can either execute this in your browser or using Node.js in your terminal. It doesn't really matter. It's going to work just fine. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys how to create a very simple object. We're actually going to create a JSON object. Okay, so we're going to do const. We're going to declare a variable called computer, and we're going to assign it an object. Okay, so this is basically an object literal. Okay, we have opening curly brace and a closing curly brace, and we can start giving this object properties, right? So before we even do anything else, if I were to just console log this computer variable to the console, and let me open up a terminal in my Visual Studio code, I can execute this file by using the node command computer.js. And you can see we have an empty object. Okay, let's actually give it the properties that we described earlier in the slide. So a computer can have a height and we can give this, you know, a value such as 15. This would be a numeric value that we're assigning to height. Same thing with width. We can give the width of maybe 10. We can also give it a depth. So we can say the depth is probably uh, maybe 15 as well. And we can give it a color. I'll just say a string white and so on. So if I were to log this to the console, you can see that we have an object. Okay. We have a height width, depth color. Cool. So this is the most basic object that we can ever create. But I just want you guys to understand that this is what an object looks like. It has properties. Okay. And not only does an object have properties, but an object can also have methods. Okay. Now, obviously you've probably heard about functions before. If we wanted to declare a function, we would use the function keyword and we would just call the function, whatever we want. We give it a name such as get height. And then we would do something with this function. We would either log something to the console. We would return a value. We would add two numbers, return it back a whole bunch of things. Okay. But objects can also have methods. Now methods and functions are pretty much the same concept, the same thing. The only difference is that when an object has a function, you call it a method. Okay. So don't worry so much about the terminology between a method and a function. They're really just the same thing. Okay, you can call it a method or a function. I sometimes call it a function by accident, but really they're methods. So don't worry so much about it. But if you're really antsy about the terminology, just know that methods are used in the context of it belonging to an object. And when you refer to functions, they're just their own independent entity. Okay, so let's give our computer a method. And we can give our computer certain methods because we can think, hey, look, objects don't just have properties they don't just have fields or characteristics they also have functionalities kind of like you know if we were to think about a human object or an animal object they too have functionalities animals can you know if you're, if we're talking about a dog a dog can bark it can walk it can run it can fetch it can do a whole bunch of things right a computer what kind of functionalities does a computer have well a computer can turn on right so we can create a function called turn on power and then we can assign this property right this property a value of a function and we can go ahead and say console log turning on the computer and if i wanted to call this function we would do so by referencing the object and we would reference the function and invoke it with parentheses you would see that we are calling Computer dot turn on power. We're calling a method on the computer object. Okay, remember we're not calling this a function anymore. We're calling a method because it belongs to the computer object. We're calling that method, and we're just console logging a message to a console. Okay. Now here's the thing: we can also do other things too. Let's say, for example, when we 
turn on the computer, we want to set some kind of field. Now, what if we wanted to check to see if the computer was actually on? And you can probably think, well, a computer has some kind of state, right? We can tell if the computer is on or off. We can declare a property called is on, and we can set this property to false by default. So when we call the turn on power function, we can set is on to true. We can also check to see if the computer is already on. So we can, before we do anything else, we can go ahead and say if this dot is on, we're going to go ahead and just say the computer is already on. Now else, if the computer is not on, we're going to go ahead and just turn the computer on. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and reference this dot is on, and we're going to set this to true. Okay, and we're just going to do a simple console log and say the computer was turned on. Now we're not going to go ahead and talk in depth on this because this, the keyword, this itself has a whole lot of meaning to it. In a language like Java, this just refers to the instance itself. In JavaScript, it means a complete different thing. I don't want to focus on the crazy concept of this, but just in this concept of the code that we're working with, this just refers to the instance, the object, that we are currently in and we are referencing the objects fields. Okay, so this refers to the computer object and the computer object has a height, width, depth, color is on property. And to reference these properties, we have to use the this keyword. Okay, so for now, I just want you guys to understand that the this keyword just in this context refers to the object itself. Okay, in a future video, I will go in depth on what the this keyword really means. But for now, just think of this as the current object that we are working on. Okay, so let's actually run this code. And you can see the computer was turned on. Great. Now, what if I try to invoke this function again? Or I'm sorry, method. And if I were to run this code again, you can see that on line 19, we are calling the turn on power method on the computer object. And we're checking the field right, the computer's property is on, we're checking to see if the computer's already on. We can see that the computer is not on. So we set this dot is on equals to true. We set the state of our computers is on field to true. And we're saying, hey, look, the computer was turned on. Okay, we try to turn the computer on again. And we can check to see if the is on property is true if it is. We just log to the console, the computer's already on. And we can also be very creative too, right? This is the beauty of object-oriented programming. And I hope you guys are starting to really see the whole point of object-oriented programming. We're not fully done yet, but this is just the beginning. But we can start to be very creative with our methods and use object-oriented programming to control the state of our objects. So I can create another method called turn off power. And you might guess this is literally just the inverse of turn on power. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go ahead and check to see if the power is on. And if the power is on, we're going to say the computer was turned off. And if it's already off, we're not going to do anything. So we're going to go ahead and just write the computer is already turned off. And obviously in a real life scenario, if you were to press the power button on the computer, that's already on. You would just say the computer is turned off. Okay, so we can actually, you know, omit both of these functions and we can just create one function or one method that just controls the state of our is on field. So instead of having two, we can just use one to, con to turn it on and off. So we can just say switch power. Okay, and we can just go ahead and check to see if the computer is on. So if it's on, Okay, we're going to turn it off. So we're going to say this dot is on equals false. So we're just going to do the computer was turned off. And if the computer is not on, we're just going to go and turn it on. And we're going to set the is on property to true. Okay. And now if I save, uh, whoops. Oh, sorry. We have to replace the method now with switch power. And you're going to see we turn the computer on and then we turn the computer off, okay? And like I said, you can think of our computer as an object that has properties and methods, and we can control the state of our object. So hopefully this implementation makes sense because this is just the start of so many different things in object-oriented programming.
All right, so before I move on to the next concept, let's actually create one more object, but this time we're actually gonna use something called a function constructor. You've probably seen it before, but it's another way to create a prototype and we can use that prototype to create multiple instances of objects, okay? So let's say for example, if I wanted to create a reusable animal instance where I can not only just have one object that represents an animal, but I can have multiple objects that all represent animal because we have many different types of animals. So I can go ahead and use the function keyword and I can call this animal. For the parameters, we're gonna take in just the type of the animal, age of the animal, and we're gonna also take in the weight of the animal. Just three properties for now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to reference the this keyword and we're gonna create fields on the animal prototype. So we're gonna go ahead and reference this and we're gonna reference type. Okay, so this refers to not this parameter type, but the prototypes field type. Okay, we're basically declaring a field for our animal object and we're gonna assign it the value of type, which is what we're gonna be passing into this function constructor when we create an instance of it. We're gonna do the same thing for age. So this dot age equal age, and then the same thing for weight. Now that we have our function constructor, what is the whole point of this? Well, in the previous example, we only created what's called an object literal. So if I wanted to create another computer object, I would have to copy this whole thing and just paste it. Now, obviously that becomes tedious. It would be better if we had a simple prototype that we can base all of our objects on, right? Because we can have one blueprint and we can have multiple instances, multiple different types of objects based off of that instance. For example, there are many different types of animals in this world. There are many different types of houses in this world. You know, you can either have a bungalow, you can have a mansion. So we can basically create multiple instances of our animal prototype. So I can go ahead and declare a variable using the const keyword, and I'm gonna call this dog, and we're going to use the new keyword to create a new instance of our animal object and you can see that we can pass in three arguments we're going to pass in the type so this is going to be a dog we're going to go ahead and pass in the age so we're going to just say two years old and the weight we can just specify as 15. you can see we have now an animal object we have an instance of an animal and this instance has its own properties i can create a cat animal we can pass in three for the age and let's do seven for the weight and i can log cat to the console and if i were to run this program again you can see we have two instances of the animal prototype isn't that cool so instead of having to create object literals over and over again we can create one simple blueprint and we can base our objects off of that blueprint, create multiple instances of it. And so we can basically reuse this prototype over and over and over again. And likewise, for the object literal, for the methods, we can do the same thing, reference this dot get weight, and we can assign this to a function. And this is just known as a getter. We can return the weight. So if I were to console log dog dot get weight, so I would invoke that function, it should return 15. As you can see in the console, it returns 15. And you can see that we have our object right over here. Okay, so that's pretty cool. And you can go ahead and create as many instances as you want. It's all up to you. But the whole point is that we can reuse this prototype over and over and over again by creating multiple instances of an animal. All right, so hopefully that whole recap of objects was a good refresher on how they worked. So in the next section of this course, we're going to start talking about classes. So I'll see you guys in that video. Peace.